Welcome to In the Hyperloop, my name is Blake. Today we're starting off with news from SpaceX and they are announcing that the 2019 pod competition uh, is open and ready for applicants. They released a new video um, just kind of summarizing what happened this year in 2018 and going over the highlights and the excitement and really getting um, student teams psyched up for this 2019 pod competition. Um, it looks like the design criteria are pretty much the same. Um, get maximum speed for the pod and uh, teams that have you know, worked on the pods for the last couple years are open to submitting pod designs again and um, altering their pods and new teams are welcome as, as well. There's uh, some new updates from SpaceX regarding the pod competition. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be taking place sometime in the summer of 2019. Um, and the next date is September 28th, 2018 for the intent to complete, to compete form. And again, you can find all this information on spacex.com slash hyperloop and just really interesting details. Again, nothing really out of the ordinary. Um, again, a high, high school, uh, uh, you know, members are allowed on the team, uh, but they have to get special permission and have to be exceptional. Um, and here's the timeline uh, going into it, fall 2018 preliminary design brief, um, and then uh, winter 2019 final design package. Really not much different from other, um, you know, competition design briefs. Um, just a really fascinating read of all the information in a 30, 30 slide PowerPoint presentation, you know, that these teams have to create. Um, and, you know, kind of, there's a funny phrase like a sanity check uh, that the PowerPoint design um, is for these teams so SpaceX can kind of, you know, see if this is actually feasible and won't cause any harm or anything. And again, no animals or humans are allowed in the pods in the tube, so that's good. And to briefly backtrack, War Hyperloop uh, won the competition for the third time in the year, uh, going 284 miles per hour. This is a great article by On The Verge by Andrew, uh, really going into what it took to uh, win the pod competition this last year. And speaking of uh, records, um, the other Hyperloop group, Hyperloop Virgin Hyperloop One, um, this uh, is just of a screen grab um, from one of their videos on developing the dev loop in Nevada, and it shows you know their different speed records, um, and you can see uh, for this smaller length track uh, they've gone about 240 miles per hour. So War Hyperloop has gone faster than Virgin Hyperloop One. But as we're going to see next, um, they are working very, very hard on developing um, their newest iteration from the dev loop in Nevada and onward to uh, actual real world. So I wanted to show this uh, really interesting 30 minute long video of uh, Kristen going through the office in Los Angeles and really kind of explaining um, you know, what the different departments have, you know, do at um, Hyperloop One and Virgin Hyperloop One. And they first, you know, start off at legal around the four minute mark. And um, this is legal and HR. <laughs> um, and then uh, they go to operations around the five minute mark. Um, and then the uh, Really nice thing, I saw this on social media, a STEM group that uh, visited uh, girls that are working on science and technology. Uh, uh, so they were getting set up for that group of about 80 students, uh, girls, and um, that's really nice to see. And then uh, business and uh, strategy at about seven minute mark. And uh, she's also in charge of you know investigating Hyperloop routes. Um, and then outside in the backyard, she showed off a couple, um, you know, how they use their downtown Los Angeles space. And there's a meeting room in the back there. Um, 
and you know how much work they uh, do to bring technology to the Nevada desert and iterate upon that and now they're trying to make it full-size mock-ups and uh, full-size test tracks um, and then around the 10 minute mark is soft oh, sorry 11 minute mark is software and development um, and then about 13 minute mark is civil engineering um, and around 15 minute mark after uh, introducing a couple of the pets and stuff um, is uh, you know question and answer time period uh, 16 minute mark is firmware and embedded software um, and there's the 16 minute mark um, and then 18 minute mark is um, levitation and haulback arrays um, 20 minute mark is logistics and you know just how they handle um, you know so many different uh, he said uh, 167 projects for hardware software logistics that are concurrently running and being developed um, and then 22 minute mark is propulsion interview and um, 23 minute mark is the important kitchen uh, tour and um, the 24 minute mark is test and development oops uh, I can't quite get it um, testing and development and uh, 26 minute mark oh here's testing and development um, 26 minute mark is uh, another Q&A um, on what it's like to be a staff member working at Hyperloop One um, 27 minute mark is manufacturing and you know how do they develop new equipment um, and how to build these new systems um, 28 minute mark is IT uh, help desk and how he fixes everything in the office and um, and it kind of ends and concludes with you know a plea and a pitch to check out the career page of Virgin Hyperloop One and I really want to applaud Virgin Hyperloop One for undertaking this really behind the scenes look meeting many different of the hardworking staff I think um, they said they have over 230 uh, staff members um, around the world and that's about it because they are ramping up to develop a uh, test track and um, full-size Hyperloop in India and this is uh, posted on August 17th um, you know just kind of giving a price of about 21 US dollars uh, per ticket for this uh, track in India and so it's getting really real um, I've heard uh, the date December 2018 as kind of a, a groundbreaking ceremony in India. We'll see if that actually happens and you know whether that's pushed back into 2019. And finally, um, some kind of old news from July uh, that Arivo has uh, gained access for a one billion dollar credit line, which is um, very nice. Not to exactly give money to the startup to build the technology but to help backers of the future uh, technology um, that are using a Revo technology which is the skate again um, and not classic Hyperloop but more kind of a, a boring company skate kind of thing um, but it levitates and goes really fast around 230 miles an hour and this article also discusses how HTT um, has secured um, a possible project worth $300 million um, in mainland China and we really haven't heard much about that um, in Guangzhou province but a uh, very interesting 10 kilometer test track and that about does it for this news pod uh, of course subscribe and stay tuned uh, for more news about Hyperloop and skates and uh, stay in the loop